So you've got a really nice tube amp, but you realise, you know, it's not the 60s and we're not playing Woodstock. And even though it sounds great, you realise you don't need an amp that loud. You know, the complaints normally start coming from sound engineers, uh, neighbours, bandmates. That's what I get anyway. So we need to make that nice, powerful valve amp work for us at lower volumes. Uh, whether it's for a smaller venue, um, venues where you might be being mic'd up and you want to keep the stage volume down, or even at home where you want to play at like bedroom volumes. It's a problem I've run into a lot, so here are some of the things that you can do to solve the problem. I'll start with the most dramatic and common solutions, and then move on to some more subtle adjustments you can make to a setup. One of the most popular and practical solutions is to just use an attenuator which connects between the amp and its speaker. <laughs> loads of different types. I have this simple one from Jet City which I use sometimes for practicing at home as well as recording sometimes. It basically just adds a master volume control to your amp, you know, perfect. It's got a speaker emulated line out as well so you can plug that into a mixer and maybe monitor on the headphones for silent practice or recording. You can plug it into the PA for live use, you know, really useful. <laughs> Downsides are that they can be expensive and in terms of tone, the more you turn down the overall volume, the less realistic the overall tone tends to become, you know. Um, some attenuators do have like tone controls to offset that, but it is a little bit of an issue with attenuators. Another one is that it can wear out your valves and make the amp less reliable. So if you're practicing every night on an amp that's heavily attenuated, you know, keep some spare valves. I practiced on a setup like this for a while and my power valves would always fail just after one year. And I'd have to, you know, get new power valves, take it to a tech, get it rebiased, all that stuff. Another thing is that a lot of attenuators only offer a limited range of attenuation. So even on this Jet City one where the overall volume is set by a knob, even when it's all the way up at maximum volume, with some of my amps, that's just too much attenuation to use at gigs or even rehearsals sometimes. So for those situations, I prefer like more subtle adjustments, which I'll get onto later. <laughs> If you find your amp is just too loud, clean and powerful to get a natural amp overdrive sound out of at a reasonable volume, you know, like a twin reverb or something, then using an overdrive pedal, not to drive the amp any harder, but to emulate the sound of an overdriven amp is a logical solution. That way you can carefully choose your favorite overdrive pedal for that job. You know, amp in a box type overdrive pedals are really good for this. You can even get a couple of them so you can switch between different flavors of amps and stuff like that. The other thing I really like about this setup is that you always have access to a loud clean sound if you need it by turning all the overdrive pedals off. I gigged for a long time with a Fender Twin Reverb setup like this in a covers band and I, it was something that I needed a wide range of different sounds for and I really liked that setup. Because the only downside is that it's never going to be true valve overdrive, you know, you might always be left yearning for that real amp in overdrive sound, and especially if you don't need a wide range of sounds or anything and you just want one great overdrive sound as your main sound all of the time. This next solution kind of sits in between using a full on attenuator and using an overdrive pedal I think. If you use a volume pedal of some sort in the effects loop of your amp, you can push the channel volume really hard and you know push those preamp valves and then use the pedal which is in the effects loop to turn down the volume, kind of using it like a master volume. And then that signal gets sent to the power amp stage as normal. Um, it works with some amps better than others because remember you're only driving the preamp valves really hard. The, um, the power amp valves aren't being driven hard at all. So if you want power amp valve distortion, you know, um, then you'll have to go for a full on attenuator. But uh, if you just want that sort of flavor of an attenuator and it's just for home use or something like that, just for practicing, then this is a neat trick. It can work quite well. 
Another pedal approach that might work for some people is to use a compressor pedal near the end of the signal chain to simulate like tube amp compression. Uh, it'll help reduce any like sudden jumps in volume that you get from a lot of high headroom amps that are a bit overpowered. It's a really nice way to level out the overall volume of your guitar signal. There'll be less of a volume jump when you use drive pedals and it just kind of feels like your amp's set at a higher volume than it actually is. If you're fairly happy with the sound of your amp, but you're finding that the volume control is just very sensitive, you know, say you can barely push it past one or something like that, then you might like the sound of lowering the strength of the input signal. There's loads of ways you can do it. Um, one of the easiest ways is just plug into input two on your amp, if your amp has one. You could use a pedal to pad the volume of the input signal. Uh, you could change the valve used in position one of the preamp valves. Uh, a low gain valve like a 5751 valve would do that really well. Um, you can use lower output pickups. You can you know, just turn the volume down on your guitar. You know, there's, there's loads of different ways of doing it and they all change your tone in slightly different ways, but they'll all let you turn your master volume up that little bit more. Amps that have lower wattage options is a really good idea. I really like the Marshall Studio series of amps for that reason because they're 20 watts switchable down to 5 watts. A 100 watt plexi going through a 4 by 12 for me is just it's just too impractical for what I do. So a, t a 20 watt amp going into an oversized 2 by 12 gets me pretty close to that sort of sound and I can turn up to the amp sweet spot more easily and not only that it's you know more compact it's cheaper, win-win. to use a less sensitive, less efficient speaker. I've got a whole video on high powered versus low powered speakers that you might want to check out. But in general, and it is a generalization, uh, I find that low powered speakers tend to have a lower volume and they sort of encourage the sound to be more overdriven and colored. Higher powered speakers tend to be louder, harder sounding, cleaner, and more attacking in the sound. So using a lower powered speaker might help you just lower the overall volume just a little bit so it's a slightly more manageable level. Just speaker rating you might prefer to use a physically smaller speaker and cab uh, I really like my oversized 2x12 that I use with my Marshalls but it's it's not appropriate for everything you know if I'm mic'd up at a gig or I'm rehearsing in a small room or something I often prefer a small open back 1x12 like my custom pro reverb 
Another nice thing about that one is that I can always add an extension cab for a fuller sound for a larger stage or an unmiked gig or something like that. Notice how a vertical 2x12 setup like that elevates one of the speakers for better projection and possibly perceived higher volume as well. So if your goal is to lower the overall volume, then it's probably best to stay away from stuff like that and go in the opposite direction. So probably best to stay away from things like amp stands, you know, maybe don't use the tilt back legs. Um, you could set up a little bit further away from your amp. Um, you could go as far as like even turning the amp towards the wall as well, or letting it lie on its front. It sounds mad and it's not the way the amp was designed to be used, but I have heard of guitarists that are very respectable, who have great tone, you know, doing stuff like that. So it costs nothing to try. Don't rule it out. I'm sure I've probably missed something, so let me know down in the comments your favourite way of solving this problem of an amp being too loud. I know I didn't cover anything on digital amps or modelling software or anything like that. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching and hope to see you in another video.